This video is all about coumarin, which is a really famous raw material in perfumery. So in this video, I'm going to give you a bit of background, talk about the history of coumarin. I'm then going to tell you how you can use it, how it's often used in perfumes, and how you might want to use it in your perfumes for blending. And I'm also going to tell you what I think it smells like, my opinions on it. And then finally, I'm also going to look into blending it and seeing what I can make out of it. So stick around and enjoy the video. Firstly then, what is coumarin? Well, coumarin is actually found in quite a few natural raw materials, so it does exist naturally in plants. Things like oak moss, lavender, labdanum, if you take the natural product of these, which you can use in perfumery, you will actually find trace amounts of coumarin inside of them. But by far the place that you'll find the most coumarin as a percentage of the mass is something called tonka beans. Tonka beans are found in South and Central America, and it's also a raw material that's used in perfumery. So you can actually get tonka bean absolute. Um, I would recommend it, it does smell really nice. And by far the biggest uh, component of this is something called coumarin, which is what we're talking about in this video. Now, the history of coumarin is actually really important in perfumery, and the reason for that is it's actually the first synthetic raw material that was made in a lab for use in perfumery. It was first synthesized in a lab in 1868 by someone called William Henry Perkin. Not that long after, it was used in a perfume called Fougère Royale, and that became a really famous perfume, really, really popular, and it was all based around this accord, this Fougère accord, as it was called. Now, the Fougère Accord is an abstract accord based on what a fern might smell like. I'm going to do a video on this in the future where I try to make one, so stick around for that video. But this, uh, this Fougère Accord is basically the combination of oak moss, lavender, and coumarin. Anyway, this Fougère Accord became so popular since Fougère Royale that actually since then, lots and lots of other perfumes with this Fougère Accord at their heart have also been created, so much so that the Fougère is now actually a family of fragrances rather than merely just an accord that's used here and there. If you're still not convinced of the importance of coumarin in perfumery, take it from Jean-Claude Elena himself. He actually has coumarin as one of the materials in his raw materials palette, but he also actually has a whole subcategory within his sweet category, which is just called coumarin or coumarins. So basically all of the things which are coumarin, coumarin derivatives, or smell like coumarin. Right, so that's a bit of the history and the background around coumarin. Now let's actually talk about how you can use it in your perfumes. So I've got this book here, which is Perfume and Flavor Chemicals, Volume 1. And if we look at entry 704, we've got a nice entry about coumarin. What it basically says is that, well, firstly, it talks about how it can be used in these fougères and formulas. It talks about how the fougère is used in combination with lavender, amyl salicylate, and with or without oak moss. So the other book that I looked at was this one, Scent and Chemistry. This book said the fougère was just the lavender, the oak moss, and the coumarin. Well, in this book, it says that the fougère is the amyl salicylate, the coumarin and then the lavender, so with or without the oak moss. So there is a little bit of a discrepancy, but all four of those materials are definitely used a lot in fougères. So that is one of the main ways you can use coumarin. But this book also goes on to say that you can blend it well with lavender, rosemary, citrus, and just oak moss in general. So even if you don't want to go and make a full fougère, you could still use lavender or oak moss, and then you could try doing things like citrus and rosemary as well. That said, with perfumery, the beauty of it is that you can always go and blend whatever you want with whatever you want, whatever you feel like to see what it smells like. So I would encourage you to try your own things as well. If you think that you've got an idea that would smell nice, then there's no reason just to stick to things that somewhere says will blend well with it. Just try it yourself and see what happens. Before we continue, however, another important thing to note with coumarin is that it actually has an IFRA safety limit of 1.5%. So that means you shouldn't have it greater than a 1.5 concentration in your final product for anywhere you use it if you're using it in alcoholic, so regular alcohol perfumery. If you're doing a different kind of perfumery for different media, you have to check the IFRA standards. Um, I'll quickly show you how to check this on the IFRA so you can actually see this for yourself. Right, so firstly, you wanna to go to the IFRA standards library webpage. I'll put a link in the description for this so you can find it yourself. All you need to do is scroll down to the place where you can search and then you just want to type in what you're looking for, so in this case, coumarin. Press enter and see if it comes up. So it's come up down here. 
Now, you'll also notice that it has a column with a cast number. Usually, it's actually better if you search in the first place using the cast number. And the reason for this is sometimes it doesn't detect the text of the name you put in properly. So if you want to be sure of the standards for the raw material you've got, then I would try both searching by the name and by the cast number. Once you've found the raw material, you just want to go and click on this little file icon and press download item. This should open up a web page with all the IFRA standards for that raw material. So we've got a page for Coomarin. It just tells you the identifiers, so the things like the name and the different names for it, the cast number, what it looks like as a chemical. And then it starts to talk to you about the dates at which this standard comes from. So this standard was revised most recently in the 2020 amendment of the IFRA. So another thing to know about the IFRA is they do update their limits every now and again. So it is always good to check periodically to check that the limits haven't changed for your ingredients. So if we go down to this section, this is where it tells you the limits. Now in the IFRA standards, you've got all of these different limits going from category one to category 12, and they basically represent the different types of product. So if you're making something like a laundry detergent or something else, then you're gonna have a different limit to if you're doing a regular alcoholic perfume. If you wanna know more about what the different categories mean, then you should go to the IFRA standards guide and check it out. But because for me, I'm always doing alcoholic perfumes, I'm only interested in category four because that's what this category is for, regular perfumes. Now, in this case, we can see that the limit is 1.5%. So what that means is in the final perfume formula, once everything's been added, including all the perfume as alcohol, the coumarin cannot be above 1.5% of the formula. But otherwise, as long as it's below that, then it's fine and it passes the IFRA standards. You should also always read anything else that it says in the rest of the document, just to check that there are no special notes, which might also be important. Again, you can see here that it's showing you it might be used in some natural products. So sometimes if you've got certain natural products, you also need to look out for this coumarin being inside of it because that will also count towards the limit. So due to the coumarin having this relatively low limit of 1.5%, I also thought it might be smart to look for alternatives, so other things we may be able to use to uh, kind of boost it or go alongside it if we want to go above that limit but are not allowed to put any more in. Now in perfumery, often you can find things that smell similar to something, though usually not exactly the same. In this case for coumarin, I found something called bicyclonolactone or otherwise called octahydrocoumarin. Now, if you look at the structure of these two molecules, it's actually very similar. The only difference is the octahydrocoumarin has all of the double bonds replaced with single bonds. Um, if you're interested in chemistry, octahydro actually means adding eight hydrogens. And for each double bond, if you want to convert it to a single bond, in general, you have to add two hydrogens. So we've got four double bonds in the original coumarin. So by adding two hydrogens to each, that's eight hydrogens which are needed. And that's why it's called octahydrocoumarin. The good thing about the octahydrocoumarin or this bicyclonolactone is that it doesn't have an IFRA limit, which means you can use as much as you want. So the only thing really that's stopping you using it in replacement of coumarin is if it actually gives you that right aspect of the coumarin smell that you need and it's close enough for the application you're trying to use it in. So anyway, let's go and smell these two things. So, right, so both of these scent strips are at 10% and I actually dipped them yesterday, but that's fine because they're base notes and for base notes, it's perfectly fine to go and smell them a couple of days after you originally dip them. Though you should be smelling a bit after you dip it so you know what it's like straight away, how it might affect the top of your perfume, and then also keep smelling them after a few days until they vanish, so you know how they will evolve. But yeah, so in this case, I've got this coumarin at 10%. Now, when I smell that, for me, it smells quite almond-like. Um, so it gives you this kind of uh, marzipan scent almost. Another thing I noticed about it is it's got this kind of Play-Doh or this kind of slight uh, plasticine kind of note to it. Um, now, a lot of people say coumarin smells like hay. Uh, it smells like a kind of freshly cut hay. I'm not too sure exactly what freshly cut uh, hay smells like, but it does have a little bit of a, a little bit of a hay-like herbaceous note. So I guess I can see where that's coming from. Now, if we go to the bicyclone on a lactone or the octahydrocoumarin on the other hand, when I smell this, um, so firstly, I can definitely smell that there is some kind of similarity going on there. But at the same time, it's definitely not 
the same thing. Um, I think the key thing that's different with the octahydrocumarin is you don't get that almond marzipan note anymore. Instead, this smells a little bit more woody. It smells a bit more like a herbal tea. So I definitely feel like in some applications, you could be using this uh, as an alternative to cuprin. Actually, you probably could swap this out in accords and see the effect that it has by changing to this. It would be quite interesting. The other thing about the bicyclonolactone is there's also this coconut note to it that's quite noticeable. Now, this to me is quite interesting because it's quite similar to gamma nonolactone, which is also known as aldehyde C18, and that smells quite coconutty. If you look at the structure of the gamma nonolactone and this bicyclonolactone, They've both got this lactone, which is a chemical group. So it's quite interesting that maybe that somehow has something to do with this coconutty smell that they both have. In fact, this uh, octahydrocumarin, it smells, I would say, kind of halfway between coumarin and aldehyde C18. So it's almost like a coconutty version of coumarin without the kind of almond marzipan version. So again, if you've got a perfume where more of a coconutty note would fit, then actually maybe this would be a really good thing to use instead of coumarin if you're trying to make some kind of hybrid between a traditional uh, fougere record and something a bit more tropical maybe. On the other hand, if you are just trying to make a regular fougere and you don't want a coconutty note, then probably the bicyclonolactone is gonna be something that's not so appropriate for your situation. Anyway, for all of those of you who are interested in chemistry, one thing I also found interesting about the coumarin is it does have this benzene group inside of it. and. I also noticed that other things that also smell a bit like almonds and marzipan, they also often seem to have a benzene group. So for example, anisaldehyde is one and benzaldehyde is another. So this got me thinking as well. Maybe if I use the bicyclonolactone to get kind of the, the base of the coumarin smell and then added something like anisaldehyde or benzaldehyde, I wonder if that would make an accord that's better suited as a coumarin replacer. I don't know, maybe I'll try that sometime. Uh, not in this video, but maybe in the future, we'll see. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this video. Now, I did say I was gonna do some blends with the Coumarin, but I kind of ran out of time. Next week, I'm still gonna do that. I've actually got some ideas for things that I could use with the Coumarin in order to make some basic, simple accord ideas. So I'm gonna try to do that in the next video. Hopefully this will be happening next week. So stay tuned for that. Until then, I hope you enjoy your own perfumery. Hope you have a great week and see you next time.